let's dive into this, guys. Well, thanks for taking some time. And uh, I know we, we, it's been a while since we've, uh, we've seen each other in person. Uh, but before I think we dive into uh, to too much, love to hear uh, quick intros. Um, you know, what, what were you guys doing before? I know, you know, Mansour has kind of gone down the engineering route. You've stuck with that. Delete started it out with engineering a little bit and then, you know, made the move over to more of the business strategy side. So Mansour, let, let's, uh, we'll start out with you while Delete gets his standing desk get, get set up. <laughs> Delete, you can go first. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, yeah, that's actually exactly how it went down. What's funny about this situation is I actually hired Delete to code my first project ever. Uh, back when I was 18, it was like Ignite the Hype. Uh, it was like little first little event company we started in Colorado. And we turned to him to start the whole website and development phase. This is before I even got into coding. I knew a little bit about it. That was, um, well, you, like, got, you got people relative of age now. That was like 14 or 15 years ago. Yeah, 14 or 15 years ago is when we first started, like the first company we started. Um, but since then, after that, after that whole, uh, you know, project we did that whole little company we created, it started showing my love for software development. So I kind of dove deep into it after that I was developing software since I was like 15, but nothing crazy. Like, you know, you think about MySpace themes, you think about angel fire or what is it? Yahoo geo cities. And that's kind of where I started, uh, just messing around with different web apps and little web pages. And it was nothing crazy, just a, an image tag here, P element there. Uh, a couple little div blocks here and there, and it kind of grew from there. Um, but then I stuck to it. I started working as a webmaster when I was uh, like 19, 18. Uh, and I kind of grew from there all the way, you know, position to position from webmaster to junior dev to senior software engineer, to technical lead engineer, to then becoming a, a senior software engineer for multiple companies. From there, I went to become the senior software instru instructor at Galvanize. After that, I became the solutions architect for a $6 billion renewable energy company here in uh, Irvine called Anwa Q Cells. Uh, and then me and Delete decided one day, hey, it's just time for us to go for our own. And we kind of lined up around the same time and we've just been building Branch Studio ever since. I think it's what, a year and four months into Branch Studio and this is where we're at. So yeah, a little bit about my background. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. So Delete, you guys met online you also met your former co-founder, you know, online as well. And uh, that was when you were building, you know, Devise. And uh, what did you major, did you major in business at CSU Fullerton? And then what you were doing web design on the side? Yeah, I started as like a freelance developer, similar to Mansoor. I started at like a young age, like 14, um, started freelancing and, you know, uh, started gaining like client from client and, I kind of had the best pitch though, because people would be like, I need a developer. And then someone would be like, I got the guy. His name is Dalip, but he's located here in Orange County. He's not in India. And then like, you know, that would like lead like a bunch of clients. And so in college, I ended up starting a, a, an agency um, and, um, you know, started hiring my staff and, you know, built an agency. And, and that was great. Just like developing apps or web apps and websites of all types of sizes and um did that for like five or six years and then sold that company and you know a year later um started what we consider as a startup studio called branch which you guys can see on Mansur's shirt over there um and we've been focused on that for a year but to correct you tj um i didn't meet Mansur online i met him through one of my friends uh, i call him like my big brother i grew up with him he like lived on my street and so they were friends and by virtue, that's how me and him met. But my co-founder of that agency that we sold, Randy, who's an amazing human and an amazing creative uh, uh, brain, um, we met online because of Counter-Strike. So all things great come from Counter-Strike. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I, 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 I jumped ahead of myself and made, made an ass when you, you assume these kind of things. I just heard, I heard Colorado. I was like, okay, they had to have been you know, on some chat room or something like this. So, I mean, you guys have worked in, in, in different roles before kind of, you know, coming together where, you know, Dalip, you were kind of starting your own, you know, businesses, Mansoor, you were, you know, the senior engineer for um, a lot of, you know, kind of companies that were, you know, somewhat established. And of course, you know, being $6 billion, you're kind of, you know, established at that point. So I guess, you know, let, let's start with you, Mansoor. What was it like working for, you know, some of these larger, you know, I guess, mid to, to large organizations 
and then now making the switch to starting your own business? Yeah, that's actually a really good question. Um, so I never really liked working for larger companies personally, uh, just because I didn't like the bureaucracy between it. I didn't like going through the red tape. I was always the type of person that wants to get something done and get it done now without having to ask for permission. Uh, there's that quote, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than for permission. And I kind of live by that. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it was kind of a, it's, they have a lot more steps in place, a lot more processes in place. It's a lot more stable and there's a lot of positives to working with bigger companies, right? Uh, and they're always looking for good talent to dive into the, this gigantic code base that they have where you can kind of go in there and, and pick things apart and improve it. And there's always room for improvement there. You know, working at a startup, I, I really enjoy the fast pace. Like me and Dalip call, talk in the mornings like, hey, what's the focus for the day? Are we going to knock this out right now? And we'll be so focused on step by step how we're going to advance each company every single day, right? Which then as we're, our team builds, we kind of get into like two week sprints and we kind of build it around there. But I would say the biggest change between working at a large organization to a startup is kind of the pace, right? I found that more large organizations I've been a part of have been a lot slower paced. Uh, more about getting it, you know, getting it done, getting it done right, going through all the red tape between, which isn't bad. It's more like, you know, we had to update 10 teams to, about this update and this 10 teams have to know about this update so it doesn't break any of their systems. And so that takes time to communicate that effectively, especially if the companies are across the country. Uh, so I don't find that issue to happen in startups. So for me, it's the pace and the fact that we have total control of what we're building and we can release in rapid iteration. So that's why I kind of enjoy working at startups personally. Nice. And uh, Dalip, you built your own company, started an agency that, you know, you eventually sold and you were working with some really big brands and, um, you know, even ended up selling device to a, to a local, um, you know, software agency here. And, you know, now we're back in kind of the startup space. So what, I guess, what has kept you, you know, in the startup space rather than saying, you know what, I've done the I've done the hard legwork. I've hustled enough. I'm going to take a step back and just step into one of these VP roles that that they can hand me. <laughs> Man, um, no, I I love startups. I love a blank canvas. Uh, I, I would love to pull real quick, like Brian. Right now, you're a student. I imagine where were you working last? Uh, so I was last year. I took the year off to take care of my dad because he's 80 and so with COVID and everything going on, I just thought it would be better for me just to like, just focus on schooling and just to like take care of him, yeah. But what about before that though? Were you working as a developer at all or were you in a complete different field? Uh, I was in customer service before. Okay. Customer service, Heen, what about you? Um, I worked in the auto industry for a little bit and that was pretty much it. Okay, awesome, awesome. Steve, what about you? Uh, I worked at a company called uh, Advanced Sterilization Products. Mm. Okay, cool. It's, uh, I worked in data data um, analytics, basically. Yeah. I was yeah. a, uh, kind of a low, uh, data analyst. Okay, cool. I appreciate you sharing that. I want to make sure I phrase like my answers like to how it could be helpful to you guys. Um, you know, like for me, TJ, back to your question. You know, I like I like when things are in a blank canvas. There's a lot to do. There's a lot of excitement for that. And I found like, you know, for, when I was running my agency for, and you guys have become developers, you know, you may, you know, work at an agency as your first job. Um, it's a very, um, you're working on like 10 projects at the same time. And so you're kind of like, you know, scattered in multiple projects and you have to be somewhat of a multifaceted faceted person. And I love that. I actually thrive in all that. Um, but when it came to startups, I found myself like more like when we would work with like, like we worked with like USC and we did an app for like AstraZeneca, if you guys are familiar with that company, um, or AT&T, those guys suck, man. Like they just so slow. They just like put yourself in a box of, of like, you can't just give like creativity. And so like, I would just feel ourselves just like having so many cooks in the kitchen and couldn't get stuff done. And so I really loved working in, with my agency life, like with the startups that were like, I have this idea and I'm like, let's run with it. And oftentimes it was more work. Like I made more money from like the big companies because I'll be like, oh, that's going to take me this much. And here's the, they're cutting me a fat check. But, you know, I came, I came alive when there was a, a, like the world was a blank canvas and a lot to build. So that's why Mansour and I set forth Branch, which is a startup studio, which is all about helping startups get started 
but I like to say it like we're here for the fun stuff because after two years when that company is built and is generating revenue and now there's a certain point at a, at a, at a business evolution where you're like, now it's all about efficiencies. It's all about maximizing stuff and making sure the profit's more. And that's when I'm like, I'm out. Like I'm here for the fun stuff and that's all I want to do. So TJ, that's where I kept me. It's just because it's fun. It's new. It's exciting. Every week is a milestone. Like startup life is really cool. Like the smallest wins that really don't matter. You're like, this is so cool. So you know, that, that, that's a little bit about that. So if I understood that correctly, you are Tony Robbins, you come into a sales team, you'll pump them all up, and then you head out when it actually comes time to start cold calling. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, all right, peace. This is yeah. I'm now. <laughs> so, so speaking of, of brand, um, what, what, so, so, you know, for, so people who might be watching, you've got your traditional, you've got your incubators, your accelerators, and then VCs, I guess, would kind of be the other spot that um, some companies go and startups go. What is different about a startup studio? Yeah, that's a good question. Manson, do you want to take that? I think you're better suited for this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So um, let's, let's list it out real quick. We have incubators. You said number one. What was number yep. two? Accelerators. Okay. And then like VC and stuff like that. And then traditional, yeah, VC. <clears throat> so an incubator is going to go ahead and say, it's, so entrepreneurs come up with an idea and there's this thing called incubators that exist in probably in every metropolitan area. There's quite a few of them. They come in, they go, we use $10,000 cash. We have some curriculum that you're going to go through. We're going to take a couple of equity and we're going to take you through like a three month kind of like predictable course. We're going to give you some mentors, some resources. And then at the end of the day, you're going to pitch to a big investor. Right. And so that is saying that the entrepreneur is now, you know, focused on this full time and kind of going through this like mentoring of an incubator and out comes out of it. And, and, and I think of that as like nothing against, you know, incubators. Uh, Mansur and I business is a little bit different, which I'll get into in a second, but they're kind of like a, they're like a, uh, uh, what do you call it? A lawnmower without a back. They're just going through hundreds of startups at a time and just coming up and some of them win big, some of them don't win at all, uh, but it's not really setting up the business for success. They're just kind of like, you know, it's a shotgun approach. Um, accelerators are kind of one and the same, I would say, but they have a little bit more concentrated where they're going to go, we're only working with 10 startups for the three months at a time, you know? So there, there's a clear differentiator. Mansour and I business is much more intimate where we go, we really only partner with like existing CEOs who usually like run, like, let's just say like a pharmaceutical business and they see the white space in a, as a new idea on like what they can build a new product they can see it from their partners they can their staff is seeing it their, their clients are seeing it they see the white space very clear on what the industry needs but these individuals are too busy running their current business so our startup studio kind of says you kind of engage with branch and you almost give like the keys to the kingdom and now we are going to deploy a full-time operator that's going to run this because you can't run two companies at the same time so that CEO that came up with the concept almost sits in the advisory seat of this new company. Now we're building that startup across all business functions that includes sales, regulatory, marketing, product development, and so forth. So it's a much more like intimate approach. Like I'm running one company right now and Mansur is running one company right now. So we have two different companies that we're separately operating. And that's actually, for us, it's, we thought it was going to be a one-year engagement, but it's actually a two-year engagement to make that business fully functional and standing. You go through your phases of a core MVP product, go through your beta users, then officially launch it and generate some re revenue. Maybe be cash neutral. That would be awesome. If, if that phase processes, now we're in the scale phase. After we do the scale phase, then me and Mansa are out and we're doing another one. That's kind of like how it works. Yep. So who are you guys working with right now? Manso can take that one. <laughs> I can't take this one. Okay, so we have two projects going on right now. We have one project called Revive Concierge, which is working with uh, the real estate industry. And we have another one called Innovation Refunds, which is working within the tax R&D uh, industry. Uh, both companies are doing really, really well. Uh, Revive being the one that we've been on longer. We've been on Revive for about a year, a year and two months, which is what the leaps were in. Uh, that's been profit. We've actually generated revenues. We're doing really well for the business. I think last last month we did about 10 to 12 new uh, fixes and new deals came into the platform that we've completed and put through. 
Uh, for innovation refunds, we've done quite a bit of business there. It's only been going for about three months, pretty solid. And we've already been able to generate massive amounts of leads, good you know, intel coming in and process about uh, over a million dollars in, in just tax rebates for customers that are bringing in. So we're running both those companies right now, uh, which have been both really exciting, both in completely different industries and how they process information, where they gather data, how we bring it into them, how we get it to the end user, how we even manage it internally has all been really exciting from both sides, right? Because we work with real estate in one and that has different connections. And then we work with tax and R&D credits there that comes with different connections. So that was really exciting for me at least. So, so you guys have tax and real estate, two very techy mm -hmm. businesses, as we all know. How, how are you guys allowing you know, yourselves to, to flex your engineering chops you know, inside of those spaces? And you know, when we've got you know, students here who are thinking about, well, when I write code, it's for you know, a website. When I write code, it's for a mobile app. Like, how, do, how are some of these other applications being used to support what would be maybe considered non-technical industries? Uh, I guess I'm not following that question. So you're asking me like, what, why, how are we creating our tech stack and what we're building to keep it, uh, keep it more maintainable since we're building for different companies? No, so no. So on the surface, you hear tax, you mm -hmm. think you know IRS, you're, you're, it's accounting based, yeah. and then on on real estate, you're you're selling houses. So how are you guys utilizing tech in those types of industries and businesses to you know, Can you I, know, help I them come in? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'll add to it at the end. So one of them is more high tech. One of them is actually kind of like low, maybe could be medium tech. So at Revive, like we're a real estate company that helps homeowners maximize the value of their home. So the things that we're building are more tools, like for our sales teams, for our agents, uh, where we mainly work with realtors and homeowners. So it's more like sales funnels, uploading documents, communicating to our CRM, having certain uh, notifications and, and communication be personalized in a way. So it's really more like a tool and experience um, kind of tech build um, on the Revive side. But I'll mainly talk about the tax side. The tax side is actually fascinating. So we're, it, we're building something called, is anyone familiar with the tax R&D credit? Well, of course, my answer is. This is kind of cool. So his, this has been around for about two decades. But historically speaking, like Facebook, Twitter, all these guys use this. They go, okay, I'm going to hire Brian and Steve. And I know that what, what, the, what Congress has passed has said, and if, you, if you build tech in, on U.S. soil, all the dollars you spend towards that tech is going to be tax, not only deductible, tax credit. So that means if I spend $100,000 on Brian's salary, I'm going to get $100,000 off my taxes, which is huge. So Facebook, Twitter, all these big companies, like Congress passed this bill where they have a couple trillion dollars like away for this tax credit. And what it says is if a company is inventing a new process or iterating or doing any degrees of R&D, that they can apply for this. So basically they're all, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, hedging all these investments in tech because the government is more or less really incentivizing them to do so. So a lot of startups and um, new companies or medium-sized companies actually qualify for this, but they're not using it. Because if, when you think about taxes, like I can already, already see Cassie's eyes. She's like, I don't wanna get audited. A business owner is just gonna be scared. They don't wanna get audited, right? So a lot of small and mid-sized businesses are like, I don't know, it sounds good, but you're talking about doing something with the IRS and getting credit, like, I'm good, like, let's just continue our business. So what we're trying to set forth is we've come out with a way on how, pe and it's kind of, it's very document, like, centric, where you have to upload tax returns, you have to identify your expenses, you have to find, like, what is considered a qualified activity. Like, this could be, like, for example, you know, Brian was talking about COVID and stuff, every company had to rethink their way of, of uh, the way they, they do business during COVID. Loading Fuse had to purchase a Zoom account. That's a qualified activity. You iterated your process, you had to invent something, and you had to somewhat optimize your business to make for COVID. That's a project in itself, and that has expenses, which is completely applicable for the tax credit. So we've, we're creating a tech that can go and take all these documents, take all this information. Future is like some like, 
level of like, you know, not true AI, but some AI to make it suggestive that if TJ was applying for the tax credit for a boot camp like Learning Fuse, that here's some recommended qualified yeah. activities that apply to you and we can make that thing a little bit easier. So that's a little, that, that we're building that whole system of how you submit these documents, how you submit that information um, and stuff like that. That is some cool stuff. So, you know, hopefully what people are taking away from this is that there's so many things that engineering can be applied to, and it's not always, let's put up a website, which I'd imagine both companies have a website. You need to, you know, have something that at least is public facing. Um, but, you know, what a lot of the, the advantages, you know, that, that can be taken is, is what you're bringing, you know, whether it's to the clients or just internally to the team to make them more effective, you know, in what they're doing. Um, so Mansour, you know, you've, you've taught at a boot camp and, you know, Galvanize, I'll admit it's a good one. So they're, they're one of the good guys. Uh, Dalip, you've hired boot camp graduates. What advice do you have for people coming through, making this career change, about to head out, you know, into the job market? Um, you know, I, I, I'd imagine you guys both have kind of, you know, you, Mansour has had a ton of experience talking to these people. And Dalip, once again, has, you know, hired a few. So what, what do you guys got for us? Oh, Mansour, you're, you're muted. One second. <laughs> I was talking and no one was listening. That's what happened. <laughs> uh, you know, for any boot camp grad, right, I would really tell you to focus on your portfolio and focus on the fundamental understandings of software development, right? Like when I hire new engineers, I'm more concerned about can they fit with my ecosystem rather than how, how good their code is, right? Like, can I assign them tasks about like getting little things done without having to handhold them the whole time, right? Uh, and I think that's super important for actually a junior engineer to come in and come into like any project, right? To be able to do the smaller tasks and not have too much of a, uh, a disruption of the process and flow. Like there is some ramp up time or that's all guaranteed every single time you hire somebody new, but you know, majority being under, be able to understand how like GitHub works, maybe understanding if we're working a react project, how those components flow, making sure that, you know, you can go in and figure, you can go in and find specific problems to just be able to debug code. I think those are really important things for any junior developer to have. Um, just because as we're building these projects, it becomes a lot more and more apparent that when, when they don't understand like the, the process and the flow, it's really hard for the whole team to come together and actually hit deadlines and do things like that because you know, we can't have those expectations. Um, so yeah, I would say focus on your portfolio, focus on making sure you understand your tools very well. Uh, and, under, and really, really focus on the fundamentals. I think that will get you really far in software development nowadays. Oh, I'll add a couple of things. Um, you know, I think um, definitely the portfolio is huge. Um, yeah. Put up a nice portfolio, put a nice website. A lot of times though, I feel like a lot of people put like the final result, you know, like this was my project and this is what it looks like. And I feel like it's kind of misleading for us engineers, whereas like, the final product is great, but we're doing so ourselves a do like a disservice by not showing the approach of how we got there. Like maybe you're using some dependencies and APIs and it, how, how can you illustrate, you know, what really went into that project to produce that final result. And I think, you know, um, if I was like a CTO looking at that, like I'm looking at less about like, I'm really looking about the way people think and understand stuff. So I think that will be a, a, a missing piece is, is it's, it's not easy to show the process, but like to somehow visually show the process of how this thing actually came about rather than just like a four sentence paragraph, um, really visually showing it would be great. I also think if you're, if you're going to be um, applying at jobs, um, you know, applying freaking sucks. So um, if you're going to apply, you want to do your research on the company, you want to personalize it. You also want to see who are the different people on LinkedIn and actually send them a message. There's a bit of a shotgun approach here. If you send a hundred applications, you're bound to get like a, a percentage of interviews. And so if we, if we're on the same page and we reasonably agree that that's kind of how it works, then, you know, you're going to apply to a few hundred of them. But if you can just do a little bit of research on the company, you know, what, understand like what kind of tech that they're building, and when you send that message, not more like, I applied for this job, I hope you look for me, but kind of more like, I believe my, if he and you were applying to an automotive company, like I believe my background in automotive and interest in 
navigation systems and embedded systems or whatever, however you can tie your uh, background and interest like to that will be like super key. Cause once, once a person sees you and they get it, like we interview more people that we know that made an impression and not necessarily a resume, like in the stack of Indeed applications, it's gonna be stand out enough. So I think that's a big thing. Um, and then um, the last thing is, you know, um, you guys are working, you guys are at TJ, so you got TJ representing you. So that's pretty good. So. <laughs> oh, I will send, yeah. I will send you some basketball tickets here soon. <laughs> I would like to, I would like to actually add on to that. I think it's super important to kind of get your experience to match the company you're working for, especially as a new grad, right? That was something that I galvanized me even faced that if we were able to match previous experience, now adding additional technology skills, they would be a slam dunk for most of those companies in that, in that, in that specific field, right? Because not only do they bring technical knowledge, but now they have the knowledge of how it works, where it's coming from and all the background knowledge to be, to, to be effective there. So for sure, that's a really good one to bring out. Really. Yeah, there's a, there's a huge value add when you can come in and you know the business, you know that the, the market that they're working with, you know the competitors. And so, you know, getting back to what you had mentioned, you know, the first, you know, kind of part one of Mansour's advice was, you know, learn the workflow. And yes, a lot of that has to do with the tech that you're dealing with, but at the same time, it also has to deal with just who else is on the team and who else is around you because, you know, we all know different, you know, accounting has different personalities. Automotive might have different personalities. Um, you know, healthcare has different, you know, personalities and stuff. So uh, there's a huge value add, you know, coming in and saying, hey, I, I already know this stuff. All I, all you guys need to teach me and, and I need to get up to speed with is the tech stuff. Um, so what's, you know, what's in store, you know, for, for branch? What, what are you guys looking for, you know, right now? Are you guys looking to add more companies? Are you guys looking to add more people to the team? And, you know, if let's say either one, what is it that you do look for in these companies or in, you know, team members when you're bringing people up? Uh, do you want me to take it? Or you want to take a tweet? Oh, you take it. I love hearing you. Okay. <laughs> so what are we looking for as a branch? Um, you know, right now we're always looking for new businesses, but it's not always a guarantee to work with us, right? We're always looking for the right fit uh, to make sure we, we're good with working with them and they're good with working with us. Uh, as in bringing, as we're looking for new employees to come in, since we're always getting new businesses to come in and new ideas and new features that we have to create, we tend to like to bring people onto our projects, the smaller ones first to kind of get them on board the environment, to understand how the lay of the land works, then from there, grow them into the bigger project. Uh, and so that's kind of what we're looking for when we you know, bring on engineers to specific projects. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's kind of where we're at. I think right now we're looking to stabilize and build out, continue building out Revive and keep bringing out new hires for Revive. And as we're scaling out and growing innovation refunds, I think we're looking to bring on some team members there, uh, both on the engineering side and also the business side. Uh, and so, yeah. I think that's uh, what we're currently doing with Branch and like what we're looking for and, and how we're looking for them. Hope that answers your question. It, it, it did. And, and Alip, was, Alip was nodding his head. So I think he approves of uh, the answer. didn't have anything really <laughs> to, to add in. Um, do you guys, you know, I know some studios and, and kind of BCs or incubators specialize in certain industries or spaces. Um, do you guys have a, a specialty or are you guys kind of looking at a little bit of everything right now? Yeah, I would say, um, I feel like over the next couple of years, we'll figure that out. Right now, you know, we started a little over a year ago. <clears throat> and Mansour and I are kind of like, it's kind of like just like, let's try a little bit of everything. everything, And then we'll kind of find our sweet spot. Um, I know our next company we want to do is something like SaaS related. Because um, the first two companies we took are like much different in, in terms of industries and stuff like that. So um not as of now, but like if you're a like consumer good, if you're trying to come up with a new consumer good, like that's not going to be something in our forte. It's going to be digital or tech related, something along those lines, um, which is in our wheelhouse. Okay, I'll tell I'll tell Mick to stop sending me those company ideas that he wants to start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so thinking back, so you guys have mentioned that it's been about you know a little over a year since you started. I'm not tracking, but I'm pretty sure it's around the same time that, you know, COVID kind of stopped everything for everybody. What, I guess, what has it been like working primarily, you know, remotely? And then as things start to open up, 
how do you guys see both branch, you know, coming back into, is it, will it be in the office? Will you guys be doing hybrid? And then do you have any insights from some of the companies that you've spoken to as well? And the reason I'm asking, of course, is, you know, a lot of the students and people here are, are thinking to themselves, well, do I stay local? Do I apply to positions elsewhere? And, you know, if a company asks me to come in, do I come in right now? Like, how, how are things looking? Yeah, it's an interesting question. So we launched Revive in January and then COVID hit and we were like, dude, we totally are in the wrong business. Like, what are we doing? Why are we starting a business? Let's, uh, you know, go back, <laughs> control, <laughs> control Z. Um, but, um, you know, we, we had a very small team. You know, you're talking like me, Mansur, and one other person. So we were comfortable enough to still go to the office every day, which we did. We trusted each other. You know, we were all like isolated in our own way, like besides the office. And so that actually allowed for a lot of heads downtime. Um, we built our app three times in the year of 2020. We built the website three times in the year of 2020. Like we pivoted multiple times. So it allowed us to be nimble, allowed us to spend time on where we needed to spend time. Um, as things open up, you know, Branch is really much of a, a ghost entity. You know, we're all about the startups that were, for lack of a better word, incubating and building. Um, you know, Branch will always have only a handful of employees which are mainly going to be the operators who are running these businesses. And our offices are going to be like, I'm sitting in the Revive office, you know, next month, the actual innovation refunds office is um, launching. So um, that's kind of where we work out of. That's where we build our teams in, in, in those respectable areas. Um, so hopefully that answered your question. Uh, I can add a little bit to that. So I think that we're looking for more like in-person rather than actually remote. I think there's a lot more collaboration that goes happens in person, right? When you have a random idea or something needs to happen, you can have that conversation. I think we've been able to get around that a little bit by using Slack and get jumping on Discord with like quick video chats. And But, you know, it doesn't equal the same, at least from my perspective. Like there's, there's a big difference between the collaboration in person and the collaboration online. Uh, so I think for the new hires, if, especially as a junior dev and dev person coming out of boot camp, I would highly recommend going in in person just because you're going to gain so much information and knowledge just from being around that environment, right? If you were working on a solo project just by yourself and you didn't have any team members, hey, like that works and you can remote work from there and that's great. But if you're looking to grow and, and gain extra knowledge, I'd say definitely go in. Yeah, it's one of the things that I've noticed, you know, talking to alumni, you know, in the job searches. They're sending out these applications and, you know, as you mentioned, Dalip, it's it, it as much as it sucks to say it, it kind of is a numbers game, you know, because you never know who's going to look at it at the right time, who's going to be in a good mood when they do look at the resumes versus, you know, they woke up and they were late to work and every resume doesn't look good that day. Um, and then there's the factor of, well, yeah, everybody's remote. So we're going to put our job up and say we're open to remote, but at the end of the day, most companies, unless they completely built their entire org around remote, you know, business, they prefer somebody, you know, who's local. They prefer somebody who's, who's nearby, especially when it is those newer hires, because, you know, as much as we all love to say that, you know, we all have amazing task and time management skills and we're more productive at home. Um, that's not always the case. And so when you have both the benefit of here's a new hire, we can onboard him, we can check on her, we can make sure that they feel supported. And another cool thing too, I think about being around the office is you see the struggle that senior engineers are going through. You realize that, that it's not you that's staring at the screen, wondering who wrote this code. It's them doing it too. It's them realizing that they didn't you know, direct or point to the right file structure. And they've been trying to figure out why something wasn't working for you know, an hour and a half or two hours. Um, so I'd love to, you know, kind of open things up and see if there's, you know, anybody who's got some questions, whether it's Yen, Steve, or, or Brian, or, or Cass. Um, and I, I mean, I don't know, guys, was there anything I missed, you know, about Branch Studio, about even actually, I mean, heck, we didn't even get a chance to talk about the Orange County tech scene, which you guys are hugely um, in, integral and integrated, integral, integrated into. I, oh, I I've, been, I've been absent for like a year, man. After I started Revive, it's uh, just been like heads down focus and then COVID hit and I'm like, eh, I'll just do, do some events later on. Well, what, I mean, what was, what is Orange County Tech? You know, what does that, what, what does it mean to be, you know, and what, what should people know about the, the, the world that they're entering? Because, 
you know, you, you've got LA and, and LA has got the attention. It's got the big, you know, tech companies, you've got Tinder and you've got Snapchat and, you know, then you go South and San Diego has a really strong downtown community and stuff. But, you know, when was the last time you heard somebody say, Oh man, Orange County, that tech hub, keep an eye on Orange County. But I think, I mean, I don't know about you guys. I, I believe that, that, that it's on the rise and it's going to hop into the top 10 over the next few years here. So what should some of the students be keeping an eye out for? Are there any companies they should be looking at? Are there any, you know, organizations, groups, or, or just, you know, spaces? Yeah, that's a good question. I feel as if, you know, no, if you're in, if you guys reside, at, I assume in Orange County, you want to definitely look at, I did this with practice a couple of years ago, you know, um, you have like, so I run a nonprofit organization called OC Tech. It's almost like the welcome mat for like tech entrepreneurs. Um, so if like, you know, for example, like Steve, if you were interested in like joining a startup, like that's a good place to look to meet an entrepreneur um, to potentially see it. But that's like a, a new entrepreneur that's coming up with a new concept that may not have funds yet, right? Um, and then like, you wanna know your organizations, like, but then you can also go to like, there's another organization called like TCVN, you know? TCVN maybe has a little bit level of people that like have an MVP. And so that's another like group of kind of people, right? Um, then there's other, there's other groups like, uh, um, but basically you wanna find out like all the different organizations who are putting these people together in these pockets and kind of just like really circling yourself around them. You know, companies that kind of came out of here like Kajabi just owned up, to, like, has a huge location off of uh, San Canyon. You have like um, Acorns was started here. We have like a couple wins. But we're mainly into like, like if you also there's one thing to know, like this is a big med tech like hub, like here in med tech. So like getting into like systems um, and getting into that area would be really cool as an engineer. Um, and a lot of great opportunity. Um, and I think, yeah, like Orange County, you know, it's, it's a, uh, LA and San Diego have the sex appeal, you know what I mean? And so a lot of stars want to be there. Um, but I think that the best thing is to like get, get familiarized with like the different organizations and that way you can kind of see like what companies are coming up, what companies are hiring. Um, and there's a great actual website. And this is like TJ's friend too. Um, Scott Fox runs a website called OC Startup Council. And I think he's done a really good job of having all the organizations on there, having companies on there, having companies in Orange County that are hiring specifically. Um, and so that's a really good, I think, place. He, he works hard. He's like a independent man that's putting this together like for the Orange County, like, you know, um, community. So like, that's a pretty good place to, um, to take a look at. And, yeah. you know, there's quite a few there, but honestly, TJ, it's, it's kind of, I've been a year out of like the, the community stuff because of COVID. It's honestly all like kind of, I don't remember a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, no, I think the most important takeaway from that is, you know, to, to poke your head up kind of every once in a while and just see what's out there because, you know, whether it's, you know, Scott, who's, you know, yeah, OC Startups Council has got a great little newsletter. I love scrolling to the bottom of it and seeing the jobs listings because, you know, it's stuff that I wouldn't see on an Indeed or a ZipRecruiter, which, you know, those are the more typical, you know, places that you would go. Um, and there is a lot of cool stuff going on. And there's a lot of, you know, these smaller to medium-sized startups that are, that are in business, have a few people on their team, but it's not, yeah, like you said, the sexy, you know, startup city where you've got, oh, it's, it's a startup that's got a thousand employees and they're growing like crazy. And I guess I'm now just describing Clubhouse and, you know, the, we'll see how much longer they we, last. We right? are, we're med tech centric and we are real estate centric or that's, or that's Orange County in a, a nutshell. You know, there's a lot, there's a lot of cool companies here in Orange County. There's also game development companies like Blizzard is right here in Orange County. There's that, uh, there's Weed Maps down here in Irvine, right, which is around here. And there are all these really big companies growing here in Orange County. Uh, you know, I also think that from a technology perspective, because, you know, Deleep is so business and I'm so tech and I'm realizing that this <laughs> conversation, right, like at a, at, a, at, a, at a very tech at a very tech level, there's a lot of these large companies here, very, very Fortune 500 company headquartered here in Orange County, right? That are using all these, I would say, more traditional old school kind of code bases that are typically existing. So I can predict, I feel like my prediction is going to be a lot of these companies are going to start looking to modernize and bring on new talent, new kind of coding that needs to go along to solve these big challenges that they're facing. 
Because you know these these large enterprise companies that I've had experience working with, they're usually built on top of each other, right? Like they have this certain system, and on top of that, there's another system that integrates with that system, and then another system that integrates with that system and communicates all these systems outside of it. And you know, I think that eventually those things are going to just expire, right? You just can't scale it up anymore, right? It just doesn't make sense. It costs too much to do that. So I, I think in Orange County. I don't know, maybe five years, 10 years down the line, there's, it's gonna be ripe for new ideas, new ways of solving these large problems. And a lot of these companies are here and existing in Orange County. So there's gonna be a lot of that, I believe, coming soon. Uh, and it's growing all the time. There's a ton of companies popping out here in OC. You see, you start seeing the trends of new technology trends. Like five years ago in OC, you wouldn't be seeing React, Node kind of builds. You're used to see .NET, you're used to, you're used to seeing you know, PHP, you're used to seeing embedded systems like working at, at uh, you know, Fisker or Karma, right? Like there's all these different types of systems that are here. Um, so yeah, I, I do think that there's a trend of it modernizing right now. There's gonna be a lot more startups coming out of Orange County using modern stacks and if not little incubators built inside of these Fortune 500 companies that are also gonna need, you know, talent to go there. So that's my gist of the Orange County market and the tech scene. <laughs> yeah, no, there's some cool stuff going on. And like you said, we do have some really large um, you know, four to 500 companies, whether it's, you know, First American, Pacific Life, Experian. And, you know, once again, you don't look at them and think technology, but when you get that big, you have to have a huge tech org, you know, inside of there going on. So, um, I, I, you know, one last uh, time, I'll, I'll throw it out there is if anybody has any questions, um, you know, we can get those, dive into those. Otherwise, um, I think, you know, we, we could probably, we probably covered a lot, you know, here just now. Uh, so thanks again, guys. It's always good, you know, catching up. And, you know, of course, I'll see you in the Slack messages here soon. But, uh, you know, also hopefully uh, out, out and about, maybe grab some coffee or something. Of course, anytime. Send the invite. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you guys will have to come back when we've got everything back on campus. And, um, you know, we've got the space fully open. I'd say I'd swing by your guys' office, but, you know, you're, you're, you're just, you're just My squatting at the other companies. <laughs> TJ, my office is in space right now. <laughs> okay, Elon. <laughs> or Tom Cruise, I guess. Maybe. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks Welcome again, back. guys. We oh, wait, will, hold on. Uh, Quick question. Oh, if yeah. people wanted to contact you, what is the best way to do so? My uh, Instagram is my first name and last name combined. So that'd be a good place to uh, contact me. Um, and my email is deleep at deleepjuggy.com. So first name at first name, last name.com. Fully branded on everything. Uh, for me, Instagram is also the good platform for it. It's Monsoor Branches. That's where you can find me. Uh, that's probably where I'm most active. And then also my email address, it's monsoor at branchstudio.co. Awesome. Before we wrap up, how did, how did the name Branch come about? That's all Deleep. <laughs> <laughs> I get it because these are Git branches, right? These are all branches coming off the logo. Yeah, that, those are Git branches. Um, it was it, because I wanted to only partner with people that have created successful companies in the past because they, they know that it takes years to build a business. It takes money to build a business. It takes good talent to build a business. I didn't want to work with like, you know, the aspiring entrepreneur, nothing wrong with that, but I knew I wanted to work with people who get it. Um, so I was thinking like, oh, it's like them branching off of their, uh, their business and creating like another product or in another business. And then there was also the cool like techie thing of like, you know, uh, of Git and branch and all that stuff. And that's how the logo came about. And it just kind of fit. And I'm like, oh, spot on. Okay, we're running with this. So Sweet. Well, we will get commit fireside chat over and we'll uh we'll get cast to merge it up to the uh the interwebs i think i did that okay. right perfect let's let know when it's in production we like the link right. <laughs> see you guys thanks Always you. Fun. pleasure meeting everybody take Thank care you. bye, bye.